Zoe Reynard visits Dr. Marcella Spencer, a therapist with expertise in sexual addiction. Zoe is hoping this will be a discreet encounter. She describes what happened six months ago and all the way up to this point. Zoe has two children and a devoted husband named Jason. She and Jason have wonderful sex, but even afterward, she's not quite content. She withdraws to the living room, where she uses her vibrator to masturbate while watching porn. In addition, Zoe runs her own gallery, Zoe and Company, where she seeks out and represents emerging artists. Brina, Zoe's best friend and helper, offers her a brochure showcasing a certain Quentin Canosa's work, and that week there will be an exhibit of his work. Zoe meets Quentin, a fascinating and attractive man, at the exhibit. He is amazed by her attractiveness, and she is amazed by his effort. When Quentin shows Zoe his work, he comes across as flirtatious, if not a little creepy. They exchange contact details to reconnect. Even after telling her mother she's heading to the grocery store, Zoe persists in engaging in other obscene activities, such as dressing up to attend a club. She and Jason engage in shower sex at night. But that night, she has a dream in which she and Quentin are sharing bed. Zoe is brought to Quentin's studio by him. Without thinking twice, he signs the contract she pulls out to begin working for her company. Quentin makes an effort to woo Zoe just as she's ready to go. Despite her declaration that she is married, she eventually gives in to Quentin's seduction and lets him have oral sex with her after all. Due to her sexual activities and ensuing guilt, Zoe's work and family life are negatively impacted. She is distracted and misses her son's soccer matches when Brina informs her that Balthazar Crane, another prospective customer, has called Zoe's office three times to schedule a meeting. To terminate the relationship, Zoe returns to Quentin's apartment. She encounters Diamond, a young woman who says she can answer any queries for Quentin and who is aware of Zoe's name. Zoe runs into Quentin and tells him she loves Jason too much to keep doing this. To show her some of his street art, Quentin takes her about. He clarifies that he began painting after Quentin's mother abandoned them and his father killed himself. He says he wants someone to be with. Zoe feels horrible about this, so they kiss again and engage in sexual activity. As a result, Zoe is forced to miss a meeting with Balthazar Crane. When she finds him, she tells him a falsehood, saying that she had to tend to her ailing daughter. They can reschedule, he says her. Despite her shame, Zoe carries on with the affair. Before they resume making love, she lets Quentin paint her in her underwear. Dr. Spencer concludes that Zoe's current sexual addiction is just as strong as her drug addiction. She advises Zoe to offer to Jason that they go through couples counseling. Later on, she asks him if they can discuss about their sexual life with a therapist, but Jason won't pay a lot of money to talk about private matters. Following more sex, Quentin begs Zoe to move out of her marriage and into his relationship. She says no since she still has feelings for Jason. She still goes to the club and attracts the interest of another man, Corey, despite everything. Zoe tells Dr. Spencer that they had sex in the restroom and that she loved every second of it. Zoe's affair persists any time she is separated from Quentin. After missing her son's final soccer match of the season, Zoe has since lost faith in her son. She has been slacking so much at work that Brina and her co-workers have noticed and are not happy with her. Brina approaches Zoe and chastises her for letting some clients slip her while acting completely unaffected by the information. When Zoe returns to Quentin's house, she discovers that he has slept with Diamond. He gets perplexed, like the rest of us, when Zoe rushes out, furious at him for this. Jason spends his evenings waiting for Zoe in the living room. He confronts her, telling her how much the family has missed her and how she has been gone late without warning. Although Zoe tries to make him look bad by claiming that he remains late at work, Jason at least tells her where she is. Once more, Zoe goes back to Quentin's apartment. But their almost sex is interrupted when Jason showed up at his door, Zoe hides. Even though Jason and Quentin have already done a lot of business together, he is there to meet with him about business involving Zoe. As Jason peruses Quentin's collection of artwork, he stumbles upon the covered painting that shows Quentin and Zoe kissing. 
Jason's partner calls him away before he can notice it. Now, when Jason takes the kids to the movies, Zoe is left out of her family's activities since the kids don't want her to go. Zoe summons Corey and Quentin together to terminate their relationship at Dr. Spencer's request. Corey tries to shove Zoe because he is irritated, but Quentin stops him. As Corey turns to go, Quentin takes a sculpture and smashes it over his head, it's not clear if this causes Corey to die or just knocks him out. When Quentin moves to approach Zoe, she pushes the glass onto the ground, cutting his feet as he steps on it. Behind his paintings, Zoe hides. Taking hold of a pointed object, he pursues her. He locates her, but not before he feels hurt at the affair. Zoe follows him out the door as Diamond enters to look after Quentin. When Zoe tries to approach Jason after following him, he informs her that she is dead to him and that he is taking the kids instead of her. Shocked, Zoe chooses to prove this assertion by crossing in front of an oncoming vehicle. Jason races over to her side. While her family fears for her, Zoe is in the hospital throughout the following few months getting better. Her business formally closes. The scar on Zoe's wrist was caused by a boy attacking her when she was a little child, which she remembers experiencing in the hospital. When she is finally allowed to return home, her children greet her with joy. Jason, though, thinks he can no longer hide his pain and carry on as though everything is fine. Dr. Spencer invited Zoe to a support group for sex addicts, which she attends. There, Zoe shares her painful childhood memory of being raped by three boys, a story she hasn't spoken with Dr. Spencer. Jason emerges from the other room to listen to Zoe's words. She sobs and acknowledges her issue, but she still loves Jason and wants to see their relationship through. He approaches her and gives her a hug. They give each other a kiss and say, our love is forever. It has always been and it always will be. Please subscribe for more movie.